Welcome to Red V TV for a Red V TV special as we are joined for the Red V meets with the man celebrating his 10 years, his testimonial at Saints. It's Mark Percival. Mark, thank you for joining us. No worries. Looking forward to it. Um, big year ahead, not just for the club, um, but obviously for yourself as well. Um, plenty of events planned. Um, obviously, you've had one opening um, night already, but your game on Friday and, and plenty of events through the year to come. Yeah, it's like you said, it's, um, it's a big one and I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. It's um, Like you said, it's massive for the club, 150 years. And then obviously we're looking to try and make even more history and go five in a row and start that off with, obviously with a trip to Australia and hopefully bring home some more history and, and win a World Club Challenge. It's Like you said, there's a lot going on, but it's something that really excites me and it's what you get being at this club. You've got a lot a lot to look forward for. And um, yeah, especially with the events, like you said, it was, a, it was a funny one. I think Pete Emmett done, done a really good job in making everyone laugh and, and enjoyed the night. So I'm looking forward to doing a few more. We've got a few ideas in in um, what we want to do and I'm looking forward to, to spending more time with the fans and that's something that you don't usually get to do week in, week out. Obviously, um, testimony on Friday evening um, against the Witness Vikings, uh, your hometown yeah. um, club. Um, really glad that they're coming over to provide some testing opposition in our only pre-season friendly and the only chance for Saints fans to see us on these shores before you all depart for Australia. Yeah, I think that's it's gonna be um should be a good game because um I've got a lot of mates down at Witness who I know are, are really good players, so it's gonna be a, a challenging one for the lads and something they're, they're sort of looking forward to because and like Wello mentioned it uh, the other day is doing all that work in the preseason is what you you really look forward to going out and, and learning what putting put into practice what you've learned through preseason. So yeah, it's gonna be a tough one and I'm hoping, like you said, it's the only home game up until I think is it March, sort of start of March. So It'd be nice to see all the fans, obviously, which I'm hoping to see them down there anyway, watching the game and, and, and supporting the lads before we go Australia. Obviously, it's been announced that you, you're staying in training and you're not going to be playing on Friday night. Any chance you might be carrying a trophy around the picture during that game? Yeah, I don't, I don't know yet. I've, I've, obviously, I might kick the game off yet. I'm not too sure myself. So that'll be my little prize. But I was going to uh, say, did you pay a fiver to enter? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> stuck twenty quid in the other night on my own. <laughs> we no, were saying, uh, we, we were smart. We were saying you should have opened that up to adults because we'd have all had a go. I know. I was laughing at the time. And Missy said, "Oh, be a nice idea for kids." And I was like, "Oh yeah." I was like, "But there's a few adults who have messaged me saying they want to have a crack." So <laughs> <laughs> myself included. But no, obviously, it's, um... oh, sorry, go on. sorry. Go on. I was going to say, obviously. It's been a bit of a different off season um, with the World Club Club uh, World Cup, meaning that some of the lads have come back into training um, a little bit later than others. So, how's the preseason gone for you personally? Obviously, without the international commitments being there. Yeah, it's been good. Obviously, I got the chance to to go away with the, the wife after after the final. Um, the knee was pretty banged up because uh, I knew it was going to be a challenge getting through them two games, and again had to have a sit down and just it wasn't. It wasn't right to go play for England. It was my knee was a bit knackered, so I wanted to make sure with what I've obviously spoke of previously. I want to get it right and and, and moving forward. And yeah, the preseason it was it was a pretty chill one at first. I was still had to was slowly progressing to to running towards Christmas, and then I think that's why my games just come that little bit weak too soon because I need to get that bit more training, more chaos. And I know that might might sound odd to people because you've got you can get that in a game, but there's just you, you sort of go through a process and that's why the England lads are not playing also because they've not long come back in. They need to you need to slowly build your body to build into the full contact, to the full training. And it does really benefit you, especially and puts you in good stead for coming back. So yeah, it's the last month or so has been great, been been good. I've been doing a lot of running, a lot of contact and I'm slowly building to hundred percent now. So um I think the extra couple of weeks training is is gonna do everyone good. You've just mentioned, uh, Mark, about having a new head coach in Paul Wellings, uh, who's coming into the job when, when the club's doing so well. Um, Wello said he's not going to change very much, but what differences have there been in training, if if there's been any? Uh, yeah, Wello, he's, he's been obviously in, involved in, in the success over the last what, three, four years we've had. So it's it's kind of 
similar to what we've 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 done before, but like Wello said, they've not it's not like nothing's keep but gonna like change in that way. we we're doing that well and he doesn't need to sort of look to change much. He just wants to keep the lads in high spirits and, and making sure we're putting in the same hard work. I think well over my saying this his emphasis is on hard work as well and, and making sure we're getting that right first before you know what we we try and look at. There's obviously a few things where in attack and defence well always looked at that we can we can slightly improve on to to keep trying to stay ahead of the pack, obviously, the chasing pack. So it's something pretty much we're just looking to keep working hard and we don't want to go away from what has got us to this point. And and I don't know it sounds so simple that, but it literally is. There's, you've got 17, 18 lads and even the full squad. Every week we go out there, we, we don't want to let anyone down. And I think it shows on the performances. Yeah, when we spoke to Alex uh, ahead of his testimonial year last year, uh, we said about four in a row being such an unbelievable achievement in a salary cap sport. Is it realistic to think, with the added pressure of going down to Australia for the World Club Challenge, um, that the club can make it five in a row? No, I certainly believe we can. I think you probably you will know yourselves is just adding Lewis Dodd to that team, not playing with him since March and. Then I know I'll play the big chunk of the year and end up missing the the, the, the final. Um, just even putting him in, into a final scenario, it's it's only going to make your team better. And and will Hopper White himself playing more games hopefully and and, and getting more consistency? I think it's it's definitely something that can be done. And I think what well on the coaching staff have done well through preseason. Yeah, we want to go and win a World Club Challenge, but we've also know that when we come back, we're straight into business on. Sunday afternoon at Castleford. So it's we have got in our heads, yeah, the, the World Cup Challenge is massively important now for the next three weeks, but we also know that we're going to have to shift our focus pretty quick because we don't want to be starting the season on on a low and, and, and not and not getting off to the right start. It's something that we've we spoke about. We want to kick on and, and keep showing why, why we are the best team. If we beat Penrith and then come home and lose to Cass, you'd still have fans moaning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, um, um, but that, that that is my point. Though I think if you go and win over Penrith, we should be we want to be coming back and and kicking on. That that's probably my point. We don't want to if we did obviously get the the task done over there and come back. You want to finish keep keep carry on that high. You know what I mean? I don't think we want to come down and and yeah, like you said, get beat by on a Sunday at Cass. <laughs> Speaking of the World Club Challenge, um. When we were having a chat with Mal Meninga, sorry, we're just name dropping, Kev. Yeah. Um, <laughs> he, when we were asking him about how seats could be... <laughs> Well, one great centre to another. Um, <laughs> we were asking him about how Saints could beat Penrith. Um, and he said being expansive could be the key to getting the win. What What do you think we have to do to, to go over there and, and get the result? Yeah, I think from watching, obviously, the NRL over years and the... the, the the competition and the athletes they have over there, they're brilliant. They have, they can keep doing the same thing for 80 minutes and that's what I've noticed and I think that's what we've built over three years. So I, in fairness to what he says, I think, yeah, playing some expansive rugby and, and testing them out is definitely going to challenge him. But I think the longer we can stick in with them at kicking long, defending, keeping them in their half, I think playing them at what I think is what their game is, Um and I think if we do that for a longer period, we do that. And I think we've shown that in, in 2020 against the Roosters. I think the lads have done so well as in playing the game they they play at. They do complete high, they kick long and they, they just suffocate you. And I think that's, if we can do that to them or stick in it with them, then I think we'll give ourselves a very good chance at winning the game. Obviously, you're going over there, the, the, um, obviously, for a couple of weeks, Um Build up as well a, a game against St George to look forward to also. Yeah, I'm excited for that as well. It's going to be um, again a good challenge because we will have a big squad playing in that game. Obviously, it'll be looked at as a friendly going into the to the World Cup challenge, but it'll be quite a serious friendly because it's like you said we've not got many games leading up to the to the World Cup challenge, so we want to make sure we're putting a lot of effort into that and, and putting a good foot forward. So, yeah, it should be it should be a good one. And I, like I said, I've watched a lot of NRL and they, and they look like a great side as well. So they're going to they're gonna challenge us and, and see where we're at against yeah, a good NRL side. 
So a little bit closer to home then. You're a witness lad. Um, how did it come about that you ended up at St. Helens rather than at the Vikings? Yeah, it was, um, I was speaking about this the other day. I was playing um, down at Blackbrook on a Tuesday night with Holton Hornets. I think it was, it was, I think it was about 13, 14, 14 at the time. And um, at that time, Witness, they were, they obviously been a great club over the, not over recent years. They've been obviously trying to rebuild a little bit more now, but back in the day, they were, a, they were a great side, had some great legends playing for them. And I think at the time I was uh, 14 growing up, the, the system, we wasn't doing too well. There was not much getting thrown into it. So, I think I, re- I was looking, wanting to move anyway at the time. And then it was just fortunate enough since uh, Derek Trainer was watching on the Tuesday night and I ended up having a decent game. So um, he come over to me dad and, and just asked him, did I want to come down? And then since then, I think at the time, over them years before, and I was watching the likes of Willie Tellow, Matt Gidley, Jamie Lyon, and you see centers like that and you're like, wow, well, I want to even... If you try to get half as good as them, it would be it would be a goal. So getting down there and and as soon as he said come down, I was said to me down, I'm going straight away. I couldn't wait because I think at St Helens you wanna you know you're gonna get made into a better player. But obviously I didn't know that at the time, but I wanted to just put in as much hard work in as I could and and see where it took me. Have you always played um, centre, Mark? No, I used to play standoff, but I just at the time I was like not. It was more like you'd just pass the odd pass and then you'd run. And I don't think, as I, when I was younger, I think I was quite a decent runner of the ball. So Paul Hume had his coach at the time, and he he said at the time, let's move him to to centre. But my dad and that we, we wasn't too sure at first because me dad, and my brother, they all played half back loose, and then my other two brothers played centre winger. So it was a bit of a mix and match it which way I went. Um, but I moved to centre and then. I yeah, just enjoyed it. I was doing, I was doing well there. So from from then, it just it's just stuck really, and it was a bit easier for me. Not 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 a lot of thinking is in that having to run plays, kick the ball, and not saying I couldn't do it. I probably I probably would have backed myself to do it, but it would have been yeah, it was a little bit nicer playing centre. Just had to know my simple role and and crack on with it. I see you've just named some some great players though. Who was your role model growing up? Uh, see, role model, I watched, like I said, I did, even though I was a witness lad, I did tend to watch a lot of that St. Helens team when Matt Gidley, Jamie Lyon played, and I did used to love watching Jamie Lyon play. So I don't know if he, he classed it, he must have been a role model for me because he really wanted me, in the likes of him and Matt Gidley wanted me to come to St. Helens. So I classed them as role models in making me want to go and better myself and, and watching the way they played, the, how silky he was, it was it was ridiculous. So it was just, I, I, I would have to say sort of them types of players growing up and, and watching them. But like obviously me, me dad and, and my brothers that played, I do class them as role models as well because all I'd do is I'd go footy at half ten on Saturday morning and then I'd watch my brothers all play for the amateur team all day running around playing rugby behind the sticks and I wouldn't go home and get a shower my mum would kill me. So... I think just <laughs> just watching them and, and being involved in rugby, they're the ones that got me really heavily involved and wanting to do it. So probably my family as well, I've got to thank for that. Yeah, I think that's fair enough. I think a lot of people do do mention the family. With yeah. That's not about the big names. It's about those who support you as you come through. Um, when you first signed your, your first professional deal with Saints, if you could go back to that point... Is there any advice you'd give yourself at that point that would have stood you in good stead for the rest of your career? Um, you know, at the time, I think it's hard to think like that because of, you're just that excited to sign and you want to you get your career going. I probably, if it could be really critical, I'd probably say get a bit more as in recovery done for yourself when you're younger. You think, oh, I've. You, 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 to be fair, your body is a lot better after games in the week. But if I could say so, now is just make sure you look after yourself and keep and keep doing it because it does sort of come to fucking catch you really with all when you're not looking after yourself. And that's something I've been doing for the past four or five years is making sure I put a lot into my recovery and and see how I get on. But it's um, 
Yeah, it's probably I'd say that it's just maybe make sure I, I get a lot bit more done when I was younger instead of sitting about having a can of Red Bull or something. <laughs> I thought you were about to say get yourself some more money. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have been there all day with Rushy. <laughs> um, right, you made your competitive debut for Saints against Leeds in uh, 2013, 199 games later. And um, what memories do you have from that debut season? Um, do you remember how you were told that you were playing? How tough the intensity was? Any nerves? Yeah, I, I remember sitting in the week. It was like, it was like a thing we play on Friday. I was sat in, in a DW gym in Witness, just having a jacuzzi with my mates at like 18, just relaxing before, obviously, before the week ahead. And they were like, do you reckon you can, can you play? Like, do you reckon you'll be all right? I was like, I was shitting myself. I was thinking, I don't actually know. Because the <laughs> leads was like, you just doubt yourself massively, even though you know you're, your ability, you're just thinking, shit, it's it's a different step up to playing academy. So um they have like sort of Danny Maguire, Rob Burrow, Kevin Sinfield, and then Callum Watkins was banging his prime as well at that point. So it was a it was a good lease team. So I was panicking like mad, but I think once you get that first touch and you you're in the game, you you really do settle down. I just remember the first half getting through me through me my job really. I didn't really do anything special and then Second half just got a little bit more joy, and I think I said to someone the other day, I took a lot of you take a lot of confidence from your first game because you end up making a few breaks, setting up a couple of tries, and then you you realise in your head you think, hang on a minute, I can do this, and I think that was a big point in my career. That game alone is in making me realise that I can play at that that level if I if I really want to put the hard work in from then. So. Ten years in a Saint shirt, you've won grand finals, you've won Challenge Cups. Which has been the most satisfying to win personally for you? Yeah, I think the first one was was obviously really special, but I think I let everything just went so fast because I was only twenty. It, it just it, I didn't really sink it all in. I think having that heartache then from not winning one for about five, I think it was. Five years till 2019. That 2019 one was, it was really special because we had some heartbreaks. 2017 semi, 2018 semi against Catalan. And then we should have possibly kicked on that year to, to win something and we ended up getting beat both semis. And it just felt like, there was a lot of years where it felt like, oh, we're just, we're not good enough. We can't get there. We just seem to can't win the big game to get us the final. And it, again, 2019, we got to the final Challenge Cup come short again and it just in my head at the time I was thinking how we I know we're good enough to do it but I didn't know how we were going to get over the line because we just kept seeing to not going right or we just wasn't putting our best performance in on the big day and I remember something after that final just watching in the 2019 watching Warrenson lift the Challenge Cup was thinking this is it's killing me I can't I can't be in this position again we need to get over the line I think and on that day, it sunk with a lot of lads as well. And from then, we just, we done really well that season. And even when we beat Wigan in the semi to get the final in 2019, it was, no one was celebrating. We were all like, right, we need to go on now and actually achieve what we want to achieve. And I think after that, it was such a relief. I think that has got to be probably the 2019 grand final was the best one. And and just because I proper took that in and, and, and it was, yeah, it was brilliant. Well, speaking of that 2019 Grand Final, I want to ask you about your Grand Final tries. First one, the try against Salford, the run back inside, a uh, little kick through. Is that a little bit of you starting playing at six? Is it uh, years of instinct? Is it something you practised? Is it just playing what's in front of you? What what goes on there? Yeah, I think that's that's just definitely something, just probably instinct, really, because if we spoke about... That play before the game, me and Cutie spoke about it, was because the in goals are smaller. Um, Old Trafford, we spoke about just getting tackled near the line and that's probably sometimes better than kicking, giving them a, a set restart. So that was something we, and I don't know, you know, sitting there in the other finals, we kept doing it. We kept running on last or not putting a kick in on purpose. And you could hear the other fans cheering because they thought it was a rubbish play, but we knew what we wanted to get out of it. And, I think we spoke about it and then I couldn't believe because we spoke about it in the week it, it come off and 
I didn't. I, I envisioned on running across and getting tackled near the line somewhere, but the the thought just came into me because I had a bit of an angle on it. I thought I could probably put a nice little kick in here, and then somehow it just ended up coming off the the right way. So it was. Um, yeah, I think it was instinct. I wanted to put the kick in, and yeah, you could say getting the right way, and it was. You get a bit of luck in that way. So you never know. It could have ran dead, but it didn't. It ended up coming the other way to me. So um, yeah, it was just a bit of instinct, really. I was. And yeah, got a bit, got a bit of luck with it. Well, that's it. I think the answer may well be the same for this one. But the, the try against Leeds, you see Jack Wells be running along the line, and it seems when you watch it back, it just seems like you switch on, you start making a run, you become the person alive to that possibility. Again, yeah. what goes through your mind? Is that something that you just think Jack Wells is on the ball? There's something on here, or is it just a case of? I'm just going to give him this option here and see what happens. Yeah, well, again, I think it, it was instinct. And I was remember, if you watch, obviously, over the years, Tommy likes to skip across the line sometimes, I do myself, to try and you can catch some lazy defenders not moving up to put people through a gap. And as I've seen, again, it was just probably instincts. I've seen Jack doing that. I know if I was doing the same, I'd want someone to try and hit a hole for me and I could try and put him through a gap or... So I just remember thinking, right, get on the get pick a gap and get on the end of it for him. Um, and also as well, if you watch defenses, they're all as Jack's coming across, all her eyes are on Jack looking at inside. They can't see where I'm sort of coming from. So yeah. I at the time I remember when he put went to put it on his foot, I was like, no, pass it in my head. I was thinking because I thought I, I had more chance of scoring, but the the way, he, like I said, Jack's a quality player. The way you yeah. put it in on that way, perfect. It was I was buzzing when I ran through. Then I was I was absolutely made up with him. So yeah, it was just it was one of those. It was a good play from Jack, and yeah, it was probably good for me to recognise to get on the end of it. Away from the game, then Mark, um, you've graduated with a degree in physical education and sports science. Just proven. Don't ask me not... on that because I couldn't tell you anything I've learned, honestly. <laughs> I was going to say, you're not just a pretty face. Oh, um, Jesus. I was going to say, what prompted you to, to go and do it to begin with? Well, I remember I wanted to do something because I thought, obviously with injuries and that and then career, you never know where it's going to take you. So I wanted to get something done. And um, Kyle Amor, obviously great salesman, was coming around the, <laughs> around the gym and, and that training and was going, who wants to join it? I'm pretty sure he got a fee to get people to join it somehow. Um, but I ended up, I thought, you know what? Sports science sounds something like I would sl- enjoy a little bit, but God, I didn't realise the work that was going to come with it. Uh, honestly, the stress he gave me for three years, but I can't say it was stressed me out that too much because we won three grand finals in Challenge Cup while I was doing it. So I was <laughs> I was happy I'd done it in the end. I'm looking at more degrees now. Um, <laughs> But no, it was it was good. It was it was challenging at times. Don't get me wrong. When you're tired from training and tired after a game, and you you know you've got some work, so you can't really be bothered. But I'm glad I've done it in the end. And obviously, I did learn stuff. But it was that intense. The course. I think we got like a one hour, a three hour lesson on a Monday night, and we got like a whole module that week to learn. It was it was difficult at times to to take it all in, but. Yeah, it's um, something I'm going to look to do with in the future, maybe go into some sort of... I'd like to be sort of a teacher, maybe, but I'm not sure at a secondary school, I wouldn't mind being that primary school with a, a bit of younger kids that are going to actually listen to you. So, But never know, I might stay, might hopefully try and do something within rugby. Um, but again, I'm not trying to put any any things on it. I'll just do what comes comes natural. You, you, you've got a child on the way, we believe. Yes, Got to start growing well, up myself now. Well, I was, I was about to say, when you're talking about kids listening to you and you want to do primary school, you're going to find out that that's not the case. Yeah, no. <laughs> I was saying this to me, missus. Like, I was getting, um, I'm quite scheduling my times in the morning. She was laughing. And it was about half six in the morning. I just had a thought. I was like, get a change. And I was like, like, you sit down, no kids in a minute, enjoying my breakfast before I went training. I went, hang on a minute. I'm not going to be able to do any of this when I've got a screaming kid. So it'll be get them ready first, then get myself ready. So it's a, um, it's not, it's something that uh, me and my missus we, we've always wanted. I can't, can't wait to have a start having my family and um, yeah, meet the little girl. Found out it was a little girl on Saturday, so um, meet her on on 
I think it's the 4th of July. She's due. Independence so Day in America. Happens, yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Independence Day in America. Yeah. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> Another independent female in the family for you. Uh, um, so you've probably answered this one a little bit. Hopefully it's a couple of years off yet. And we were going to ask, have you, have you given any thoughts what you're going to do when you hang up your boots? Even if you if you get a job outside of the game, have you considered doing something to stay in rugby league? Yeah, I said, um, I think, well, I've done it a lot. And um, I think a few of the people I've met before have like, I would I would be very interested in to work with with some outside backs in the game. I don't know whether there's a role to do that, but as in spend a bit more time with them and 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 teach some young kids. Oh, like you said, I think I'd quite enjoy doing that. And whether there's a job role for that, I don't know. I might have to. But as you you keep getting older now, you get more confident. I don't know what actually I want to do yet, but it's um like you said, I'm I'm hoping to have a few more years in in my career first, and then then start thinking more towards that. But like you said, you never know what happens. So I do, it's just, it's difficult one. I would love to stay in rugby, but whether there's a role that I would love and really want to jump into, I'm I'm not too sure what that would be. More money as a teacher. Yeah. <laughs> right. <Possibly. laughs> That's the end of the, the main questions. We always finish off these interviews by wanting to do some quick fire questions. Yeah, yeah. Every, oh, everybody's rinsed you over the years, so feel free to uh, to get your own back. Yeah, a I'm bit. going to town if I can. Right, <laughs> first one, best trainer. Best trainer, right? Um, I've got to give it to Johnny because he's constantly doing his pre out, getting his body right, and I think what he's been through, it's just. Massive, it's unbelievable to see. I don't think he's missed a game now in about four or five years from what he went, what he's been through, Johnny, and to come where he is now, winning all the trophies he has, getting the accolades he has. I think he just constantly, even now, he's he's in early, doing all his prep, gets ready for training, and when he trains, then he's he's unbelievable. It's what you see on the on the weekend. He's he's cutting you to pieces. He's defending great. He's always got a lot of energy. And I just, I'd have to give it to Johnny. I think he's, even though the, there is, it'd be hard to, there is a lot of good trainers. You've got like, to, obviously, Tommy, Robes, Morgs, they're all great lads and great trainers. So, but I'd, I'd have to give it to Johnny for the, the amount of effort he puts in. Who's your cleverest teammate? Cleverest. It's certainly not me. Um, You know what? I'll give it. I think I don't know if Big Al's a bit undercover, as in because of where he's from, Jews, but he doesn't sound the cleverest, <laughs> I don't think. But he's he does have I don't know what degree he's got it in, but it's it sounds smart. So I think and the way he speaks and what is it? What's D surveying? Yeah, there, there, there it is, yeah. So I, I think that, he's meant to be. That's good. just counting bricks, isn't it? Is it? It is, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> but no, I think Al's he's a bit of undercover smart, I can tell him he's he's coming in training in some glasses the other week, which I've never seen him. So I think he thinks he's smart as well. So um I'll go big Al on that one. Uh, who's not the brightest? <laughs> now we don't want to see well. A couple of lads may have mentioned you in this, but Al couldn't last year because of your degree. Yes, there you go. See, I'm not <laughs> as, I'm not as stupid as everyone thinks. I just probably do some or say some silly things at times. Um, but the not the brightest. Do you know what makes me laugh for the minute? It's George Delaney, like one of the young lads. He just comes into the gym and he's a bit dozy. And I'm not saying he's not bright. I don't know, but. I, I just look at him and start laughing because he's just... I was watching him do some sort of like player metrics and he's a big dozy forward and he can't be bought. He's like slow move and he just makes me laugh. But he's a really <laughs> nice kid as well. So, But yeah, we'll go with him. Bit of a dozy, dozy one. <laughs> that's just being a teenager, I think. Um... Yeah, that, I think that's what it is. He's just... He's, just, he's that oblivious. He just, he just makes me laugh. He's funny. All right, then who's your toughest teammate? Toughest? Oh, God. There's a good few. I think um, definitely I've got Tommy Mason with that one only because of 
he's a good mate of mine, but the way over how many years now he's done it for, the way he carries the ball for your team when you're really struggling, but he does it 24, 28 times a game nearly, and you're thinking, obviously, like we spoke before, toughest can mean how big they are, how hard they hit, but just the way, obviously, like, like Tommy's not, not the biggest of blokes, which he knows that, but the way he runs it in and the meters he makes for how many times he does it, it's sometimes you can only hang your hat off to that and he's, he's unbelievable and the way he, he continuously keeps doing that, but as as well as score tries, <laughs> it's, um, it's a brilliant, brilliant to have on the team. Who's your most difficult opponent that you've faced? Well, just player or just opposite player or can it be anyone anyone on the field? Oh well, anyone on the field. I was gonna say if your most difficult opponent faced is your misses, you can say it as well. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. She she's up there. Definitely. <laughs> um but our difficult opponent. So I will actually have to say Carl Watkins because when I've I've played against some great centres, but when he was, and I'm not saying Cal isn't in his prime now, but he, when he was a bit younger, he was obviously before his knee injuries, he was a lot lighter on his feet quicker, even though he's getting that back now and he's looking absolutely brilliant. I think in his prime, when you're playing Leeds in 2013, 14, 15, 60, all them years, he was, he was absolutely, he could step off inside, he could go around you. Yeah. He could hit a line. He could he could do it all, and I, he was someone probably I looked up to as well when I was coming up because he was he as a centre he could do it all, and I think playing against him he, he, you were always on your toes on your in your defence. You didn't know what he was going to do, and I think when you're playing against a player like that as a centre, it's always it's difficult to to defend against. So I definitely say him in, in his prime. Who's your best mate in rugby? And they say, well, I think everyone knows that it's, to- it's Tommy. It's got to be Tommy. <laughs> Even that's probably why I've given him toughest. Everyone will be saying that's bullshit. Um, but is, no, that why you got to... to... is that why you persuaded him to put one of your testimonial jerseys on then? Yeah. Well, to be fair, I won't tell Lizzie this. I did try, well, he's going to know now, like I get said again. I was trying <laughs> to get Johnny on, but I had to go downgrade and get Lizzie. I was laughing with him. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it was, it was funny. I've got um, the, like you said, Lizzie and Tommy on the top. So they're good lads, and I think Tommy's definitely someone I, I'm, I'm well close with. We room together wherever we stay through the year. I think I'm going to be rooming with him in Australia for three weeks. So that should be that should be a barrel of laughs. And he's um, he's just a good lad. I, I really do get on with him, and he always have since I've since I've started. But especially over the last, I'd say. If, Five six years, uh, we've we've grown grown even stronger together. So it's a um, he's a good lad. Excellent. Um, what's your favourite stadium that you've played at? And if it's Old Trafford or Wembley, what's your favourite away ground? You know, favourite actual stadium. I think it's obviously playing at the the grand final and the, the um, Old Trafford and Wembley was brilliant. Um, but as in. Oh yeah, no. Do you know what? I'd... Do you mean? Do you want me to not say the Grand, the Old Trafford or Wembley? Can, can I say it? You can do. Yeah, you can do. Of course, I you think can. Wembley is in because I've only I've only been the I've been there twice and obviously only won once. Been there and watching it over the years, it was always on a summer's day, and I've always gone in my head, oh, I'd absolutely love to play there and running out and all the fans are there and and the flags and it just. It's a nice summer's day and it just reminds me of Challenge Cup Rugby watching it when I come up and I, lo- I absolutely love playing there and, and and watching the week build up. It was it was something that was always stay with me and as well as the Old Trafford. But there, there was a good stadium play that was in 2016, Four Nations. Um, I think it was is it West Ham Stadium at the minute. Yeah. Yeah, that was that was epic. That was something I've never really experienced before. That was just the stadium itself is just unbelievable and it's got like a big track around it, hasn't it? I think from what I can remember. And yeah, it was just stadium, yeah. yeah, it just felt like a bit overwhelmed. I was like it was it was huge and and it was nearly packed out. So it was it was a really good day that. Um uh, what about worst stadium you've played at? Worst. I've got to say Wakefield. <laughs> says Wakefield. When all the lads are summer spewing before games, myself including, you've only got one toilet and everyone's waiting. Yeah. Trust me, it doesn't 
this doesn't smell the greatest before a game. And <laughs> there's not, it's, it's unfortunate for them, but there's just not much room in the changing rooms. You're trying to get your, your prep done before the game and there's just not, not much to get done. And then, yeah, you don't, you get hackled by the fans there, quite, which is quite funny. So, because they're literally on top of you. So I think I've got to say where it feels up there the worst. Right, then who's your best dressed teammate? Best dressed. Certainly not Big Ali he does dress shite. <laughs> He'll have a vest on Al now when it's two degrees outside. <laughs> um best dressed. Oh god. Um do you know what? I'm gonna give it again. Al Tommy. I think he's got this is gonna sound it sounds a bit weird, this like I've been in love with him, doesn't it? <laughs> well, he, it's always similar to me. He's got I like his dress sense. He's uh, he's always into the pair of jeans and some nice trainers. That's gonna so, be you in twelve I'll... months when you get your testimonial money. That's what it is. You what, Sally? That's gonna be you once you've got your testimonial money. Tommy's oh, ad is oh, yeah. big Hopefully. spender now. <laughs> That's right, then who's your, who's your worst dressed teammate then to finish? Oh. Big Al, got to be. <laughs> Even though he's helped me out loads with his testimonial stuff, I've got to give it him. I'm not a fan mm-hmm. of his dress sense. He has these basketball vests on, and I don't know what they are, but he seems to love them. So. <laughs> Well, and you never try being that big and finding something to fit, yeah. To be fair, yeah, that's probably his, maybe his problem. <laughs> but I feel, I won't say too much in it, but I'm just not a mad fan of his dress then. <laughs> right, Mark, just to finish off, your testimonial jersey came out the other day. Yeah. Um, plenty of things throughout your career and, and things that mean a lot to you personally as well. Yeah, so um, it was. I enjoyed. I went down obviously to O'Neill's and 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 designed it with with them, and just I wanted to make sure I get the red V on there, and and obviously me me amateur club Holton Hornets who give started my well, not my career but started out me me love for rugby and yeah, and then having like you can see there on the on the bottom right is me is my brother. Um, he obviously played for Witness and and the that was the game he scored in to get him promoted to Super League so it was um, something that I wanted to to keep him involved in even though he's not here is, is have him on the shirt and probably the only good thing is like you said again yeah I'm not going to be able to wear it Friday night but I'm going to definitely keep one and get it framed and, and, and remember it for, for what it is and it's just nice to have him on it and and not especially just to buy him on it is just a massive thank you to obviously all the sponsors and yourselves for, for all the help that you have you have given me um going forward for the testimonial year now and because without using and all the fans and the sponsors it wouldn't I wouldn't be able to have this year for, for myself and, and get all the all the support so just want to say thanks for that as well Absolutely and obviously all your sponsors on the jersey who are behind you um, you're obviously very well thought of across the town 200 for parents hopefully coming up in Australia um, yeah. Friday night is your game and get the image up. So Saints, yeah. it's our only chance to be there and um, before you go to Australia to, to wish it off. Listen, there's nothing to stop you putting a kit on. You can just do a full John Terry. You know what I'm thinking now? I'm, I was laughing with uh Wellows, like, come on, just sit, give me three minutes at the end, I'll run on, won't touch the ball, then I'll clap everyone and then that'll do me. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't he wasn't a fan of that, so um <laughs> no, he's yeah, like I said, he is as good as it is. It, there's just a bigger picture that in the with Australia and and I want to try and play week in week out for Saints this year. I don't want to be trying. I want to make sure the knee's fully right going forward. So as good as it is, I'm still gonna go. I want to be obviously gonna be there mingling with everyone, enjoy the day and and just yeah, thank everyone for for this not only for what they're doing that night, but for what they've done for me for the past ten years, all the support because. As a player, if you don't get support from the fans, you're not you don't sometimes you're not gonna get the belief and that's what I see I like is having to support the fans and it makes you wanna kick on and, and not only do your family and the coaches proud, you wanna do the fans proud and I think that's something I wanna thank them for as well for the support they've given me over the ten past ten years. Absolutely. Kev, is there anything you want to add before we finish? 
Um, you talk about the support of the fans. I don't think fans have been more happy for you than the try against Warrington, um, where yeah. you said you just had to trust your hamstrings and go for it. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, that's it. Listen, from a selfish point of view, you make me feel really old because I was 32 when you made your debut. Um, and that 10 years <laughs> has gone by in the blink yeah. of an eye. Um, but yeah, listen, just keep doing what you're doing. Look after yourself. No, I will do. Thank you. Cheers for this, fellas, as well. Really appreciate it. And um, hopefully we can see you uh, Friday. Absolutely. Yes. Mark, thank you for joining us. We've had 10 great years watching you in Red V. Hopefully we're going to get a, at least a few more and a few more trophies under our belt. Um, for everyone watching, thank you very much. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And don't forget to get along to Mark's testimonial on Friday evening, 8 o'clock kickoff at the Totally Wicked Stadium. And also, all his testimonial events throughout the year, um, we'll be publicising it on Red V. There's Mark's testimonial page on Facebook, his, test his Twitter, which we'll put in um, the, the comments below. Um, and you'll make sure, if you do miss out, it's because you've not been looking properly. Catch you soon. <laughs>